I mean, they've got giant teleports. They, the, the name of the game is based off of the fact that there's giant interplanetary teleporters. Yeah, but you have to get to them. All around. You have to get to them. That's hard. Oh, yeah, it's true. And each each of them is only like one to one. It's not like one gate you can travel to any gate. It's one to one. So oh right. If, so you have to find ways to, to set up to teleport yeah. between them yeah. on one planet. Yeah. If you get to the wrong one, you can't go to the right spot. It's like oh, oops, I land in the middle of the ocean at on the Atlantis of this world. If there is an Atlantis, you know. Trope I've always are liked. there one way gates? I thought the gates were always two way. Oh no, they are two way. But okay, I so mean, you could just you could just walk back if you're like oh I missed. It's like, oh, right, it's this third gate on the right. And then you just go mm -hmm. back in and keep going from the first thing. Yeah. yeah, but what if it costs too much power and then you don't have any power for the way back? You have to find some on the planet and then you're like, oh, God, there's nobody here Does that wants to give you power. I thought it just worked when the sun was in main sequence. I have no clue. I didn't really look. I didn't look I thought, I didn't. Yeah, I thought it would just sort of work by default. I, I mean, or didn't. It's, it's a lot of energy, right? If it is, that much but energy, it was divided by the off. sun directly. Perhaps. Well, the sun is pyre, so I was right. It's powered by power, pyre. Yeah, yeah. It's just not powered powered by you grabbing pyre shards throughout the map and then throwing them at the gate until it works. Mm. It's not a toll. It just needs to have that. It's like, it's like saying that you need to throw, you need to shine a flashlight on plants to make them grow. It's like yes, they need light, but they can get it from the sun. It just sort of happens. I'm same not sure thing. Just, I'm not sure if you use a flashlight, it's going to give them the same power either. Would it? Really bright flashlight, maybe? I mean, it must it must do, because you'd had people... Before pot was legal, there was people basically doing that and basically having giant suns indoors to make pot grow. Yeah, you probably need a special kind of lamp. I'm just thinking, like, the LED of I, my phone. I don't know. I just know that they're... I just know it's very flammable. And a major hazard, and then it becomes... We, we had a lot of grubs in the neighborhood of growing up. It was mm. really annoying. A lot yeah. of fires? Not very many fires. I think oh. one house burnt down, but it didn't spread. Oh, only one, only one house. Yeah. Burned. When I grew up, there was none that were growing up, so that was weird. No house burned down there where I grew up. Oh, well, that's yeah. good. I mean, it is. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Uh, well. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, good to know that we have. That good to know your interests. Yeah, are burning in fire. Yeah, burning houses, uranium, uh, helicopters. You know, the usual stuff. Right, so if, if I ever see you on a nuclear-powered helicopter, oh. I'm assuming you have a flamethrower in there, or possibly just a bucket full of napalm? Yeah, it doesn't have to be a flamethrower, you know. That's a, a bit too expensive. Sometimes you could buy a That's one. true, and you're in a helicopter, so you can just drop it. Yeah. You can just drop the napalm, and you're good. Well, just drop fire. It might well, go off before I get to the ground. That's but... true, it could be thermite, too. Although thermite, would be, you might, like... I'm, I'm kind of cheap as well, which is why if I have a nuclear-powered... Oh, yeah, then go for I'm... thermite. Yeah, thermite is the cheapest option. Yeah. Yeah. Like I won't have lead armor. I don't know. I mean, at that point, I really don't really care about my life. I guess if I'm on a helicopter, reactor powered. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 yeah so maybe I'll just know. like burn down instead. It's gonna be easier. So set the helicopter on fire, crash it into, mm. the, and then it just falls into the building, and then the building goes on fire. Yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to burn a building. That's kind of evil. I but just you were want... just talking about wanting to burn a... I'm sorry, ZK, you're really confusing me right now. Do you want I... to, like, are I you trying to burn down a building or not? No, I just want fire. I don't want to burn down a building. Oh, I just want fire. well, come here in the summer. There's plenty of oh, fire. Okay. Oh, right. The West yeah, Coast. Yeah, no. There's a lot of fire. Yeah, exactly. No, we got... Just go, go up north. It's like, no. We have all the fire you could want. In fact, take some home. We, we, we have too much. No, I, I think I'm fine. I won't bring the fire to my place. It's uh. Are you no. sure? Because we we really we really have we have to we have much to spare. It's very generous, I suppose. I I guess I could take some home on the plane. Okay. I could. Just a little bit. Just make sure you you know you take care of it. You feed it wood. You know, don't don't let it get lonely. Of course. You not. know how I'll, fire I'll... is. Yeah, it gets very hungry and never stops eating everything. Yeah, and it's just snapping at you. It does get a bit. It does get a bit hot at times. It's not. A, it's not the nicest. It isn't. But you know, you you put it in a nice little home, you know, little little wood iron cage, and it's all it's all good. It heats your home. Mm hmm. Ah, if only we had pyre. Pyre is energy and magic. That would heat up your home way better, way longer, way deadlier probably as well. Okay, I have a lot of questions we're going to have to throw in the dev Q&A channel about, about this stuff, because I was like, how does this work? What are the safety risks? What happens if you try to use it uncontained? What is the containment procedure for py for Ether or Pyre or any of this stuff? Like, what can I'm you just... do with it in terms of home heating technology? 
So I'm kind of assuming it's, that they don't really care. Like, you know, at the start of radioactivity, when you were learning about uranium and plutonium and everything, like, oh, cool, let's just see how much energy comes out. And you don't really think about the security issues. I sure could see that, that being a Jorah thing, for yeah. sure. But I still feel like there'd be some degree of knowledge of how this works to the point that they'd be like, oh, yeah, we got to not just... We can't make the spicy rocks go do everything or we die. We would have learned that the, by now. But in the Tom Metro side, it would say, well, they don't need to know. And they're low enough on the ranks that we don't have to care about their life. So they can go work on it and then we'll oh, be Oh, yeah, fine. no, they, the, that's the Tom Metro way. You, get, you deserve. Yeah, exactly. If you, so if you died of pyre poisoning, obviously you deserve to die of pyre poisoning. That's how oh, it works. Obviously, from the very start. That's why we're doing that job. Yeah. You, if you would have deserved better, you would have gotten better. Because that's how logic works. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows circular sense. arguments are how you make arguments. Oh, yeah, how you <laughs> want to do arguments. Make it make sense. Ugh. I have a counter Go from premises no. to conclusions through sound logic? Pfft, what's wrong with you? What? How much is it? No, just assume, just assume the conclusion and then use that to support the conclusion. Come on. Obviously. I mean, that's how Santa plays for sure. He's just like, oh, I just want to kill my opponent. How do I get there? You just kill him. <laughs> Yeah, although know. to be fair, they've been they're respecting Mixu today. They've they got the Legion a little forward, but by their towers, not that forward. They're just they have been playing very straight. This yeah, is so far. So far. So far, so far, but nothing well, super nothing wacky. Yet. Yeah. I am waiting for the for the proxy so found uh, for the proxy uh Angelarium coming up soon. For the throne, of course. Yeah, there's a giant spot here you could put it. But well, it's not I time mean, yet. Well, I mean, the whole second main, right? The main of your ally. It's a great That's spot. That's what I mean, yeah. Hide. Yeah. Everything can hide there. Well, at any event... Yeah, they... fighting for... The <laughs> first, first time, I think, on stream, we've seen the person who actually kills the pyre camp get the pyre for that first camp. Oh, Doesn't get stolen. Does lose his Antari in the process. At no cost to Mixu microing back perfectly well. So Santa Claus... They got a little. They got ahead on Rezor, on Pyre. They got ahead on the, on their ability to control the map a little better. But they are going to be. They're going to be have to make use of that. Like they're going to need some more towers because they're not going to have map control otherwise. Yeah, Santa they can just play that. it slowly. Santa can play it they slowly can. if he wants. They can. That's true. But they're going to have to. They they put themselves <laughs> in that position. I'm quite curious how slowly Santa wants to play it. Makes you the one going for the dervish. So ready to. Jump in and harass his opponent. And seeing how Santa set up his bases, uh, it could be... I mean, it could be fruitful as a as a way to harass, go into the second main and go from there to attack both bases. Makes it as a way that's, of attack. Oh, that's but the an opening. Coming. Ooh, the full wall they coming have time. They have, they have time. <laughs> like, they, they're, they've gone a good minute before they have to wear for the tower. And oh, not only yeah. like they really can just walk in. Honestly, Mixu can walk in any time and just have free reign. Yeah, but Mixu's setting up a counterattack to attack two places at once to make sure his opponent doesn't see it. Santa heading for his early third. So Santa definitely going for a late game here. Not not going for a big timing attack. He just wants to survive and have a bigger army than his opponent. Well, let's see if they're able to pull that off as Mixu comes in to start wrecking some of the economy. Santa Claus with a flank on the Absolvers. Solid choice. Can they stop them? Have to get that deploy, then those dervish are dead. Mixu, able to get out, did some damage, got in, hit hard, got killed. The dervish oh. got stuck. Body blocked by the Zentari was not going to attack move. Losing two dervish for free. Yeah, All right, well, <laughs> that sucks. I thought I was going where to start with, but. Uh... Dervish not too expensive, but it's all about keeping your opponent on their toes the whole time, and now he can't do that. He now knows about the full wall, of course, so won't be able to keep going into that into that choke point. And Santa closing off that choke point, if he does eventually, will really make it easier to defend everywhere. Not only that, I mean, look, Santa just around the map, picking up spots for towers, like strategically placing all their towers so that they can see everything. So that yep. Mixu cannot be tricksy. And, and also, to point out, there's a scout here. There could be a tower behind the moat line anytime. Oh, yeah. He, he is definitely planning that. So, oh, is he? I don't know planning it. They've done it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They, they'd see it coming. But still, you know, if Santa, maybe a big fight breaks out, Santa decides, you know, now's the time. Start sending down some tower foundations over here. And 
Man. Or, you know, makes you just... Very useful knowledge. Santa, let's see, they have... They, I mean, they could build... They could build anti-air. They have the... They have the Sentinels. Well, they have the Sentinels. Yeah, yeah. They already have Sentinels. And going into this push, and Mixu doesn't see it coming until his teapot comes in, and... Sandy needs to be careful not to get surrounded. Okay, Mixu coming in back through... No, Mixu coming Mixu's in from all... way out of position. Okay. Santa has the space for free. There's, like, Santa's yeah. just... Santa's gotten a massive win handed to them thanks to this fight. Well, of no, course, this yeah. game will be slow going. Th this game will be slow going, so while this is a pretty much a very... Oh, a, a big, big lead for Santa, <laughs> what needs... Oh, man. This is Nothing, it's a big no lead for Santa. Bigger lead. Yeah, bigger lead thanks to Mixu having lost their Sentinels. Getting Castigators up to have some kind of anti-air. But not going down with the fight. Mixu does at least have some rating on their own. Let's see what damage they can get. Santa... Well, they're getting some information. Maybe losing some ether. They're otherwise having a field day wiping out everything here. The Castigator is up. So, Santa's... Santa's time in the f time with having some fun with their bonus base. That's over. That that is yeah, definitely over. But you know, it was it was a fun party while it lasted. Yeah, party time over. Time to run away with those scepters and does lose one in the end. Uh, but behind this, he killed a few of his opponents' wardens as well. Has a few sentinels. His main base still being attacked, but he has the bearer of the crown. So heading for that late game unit already. Uh, yeah, Santa with that big lead killing that third base is. View is confident that he can defend pretty much anything and head up for thrones. That is. That is exactly what they're doing. So we have. We have this very fast attack progression from Santa, which they've been able to pull off. They've had solid map control this entire time. They've rebuffed everything Mixu is trying to do to stop them economically. They've been able to slow Mixu down, like take an entire base, slow Mixu down significantly in their own expansion attempts. And while Mixu does have Castigators for anti-air, you have a significant ground army on top of the thrones, so Santa Claus does have the resources to support the thrones. Yes, like, uh, but you know, Castigators with their range are really... Uh, they're as much a hard counter as you'll get in this game for another unit, right? The Castigators deal a huge amount of damage to them. Uh, so we'll see how he tries to point. deal with it. Those oh man, those Sentinels getting shot down by the Castigators. I don't think the Castigators have the range upgrade yet. Well, it doesn't matter too much so far, as he does kill two of the Sentinels, going for a third. That uh, doesn't need it, and gets the tower that Santa had was about to set up. Good position for him. Up his opponent's tower, as Santa just taking the bottom right of the map, taking all the bases he can. I'm kind of expecting him to take the one in the bottom right, as does have two Efers, And a double Efer can make such a big difference. I'm kind of surprised they haven't set up to take it yet, to be honest. Like, they're... Yeah. On this map especially, Ooh. you need it. Oh boy, do you need Killing it. Yeah, killing the rocks is so powerful. Pillar coming down. Mixu trying to defend this as best they can, but it's just... It's not happening. Santa's... Even with the tower, there's not enough. The Cascade's the only things left, and the Absolvers are going to wipe them out. However, the Thrones do go down. Mixu, while they did... They did lose this, it was a Pyrrhic victory for Santa Claus. They burned a bunch of Pyre, they lost all their Thrones, they might be able to take the tower back. Mixu comes out with a stronger army. Ooh, Arc Mother as well coming in for uh, from Mixu to help defend on the next pushes. And yeah, the Cascaders, even with the Thrones of uh, Santa, the Cascaders already made four of them is enough to take down quite a lot of Thrones. Even if you have a bunch of them, they'll just get focused fire down so quickly like that Sapter going down immediately. Ooh, Santa's got the Thanks. work cut out for them to make these Thrones work out. That that was... You were right, ZK. That, that worked out far better than I expected for Mixu. Oh yeah, those Cascaders, man. The... And Mixu behind that is building up the rest of his army. It seems like he knew Santa was heading for those thrones that early. Like he probably saw the bearer of the crown and prepared well, for it. Yeah, more than likely. If if not, it was just a matter of understanding. Like this is what your opponent's going to do. Like you're fighting against Orzum. Ooh, the that's, fight for the middle for the ancient the coming in. Fight for the middle, which it's going to come down to Santa Claus positioning absolvers versus Mixu just having more troops. Yeah, the Howler's, Ooh, the Howler's coming... coming in for Santa. Uh, but it might be too little huge. too late. It might be, oh, but it does it give Santa the opening to come in here. Start contesting. It's a question of how much damage Mixu's forces take in the meantime, but they're not getting targeted. It's entirely the ancient Mixu getting all that fire. They have everything they could want. 
to continue oh, push. Yeah. They have to push forward in this game. Yeah, Santa's still building more thrones, and his thrones are building up slowly but surely, but would be enough as those castigators are still alive and none of them died so far. Santa getting a few castigators of his own, and Halberds are actually a pretty good counter to all these things, right? If you can get the right fight, get the right engagement, you can just keep shooting and scooting back. And, well, the tower's coming up, so good defense point as well. Oh, that oh. throne thing. Oh, this is a bad position for Mixu. Santa Claus oh, able to wrap around on all sides, forcing the retreat. Mark Mother is only able to help out so much as the thrones start wiping everything out. Not enough castigators to hold the line either. And Santa Claus, despite losing the pyre, takes full control of the center. Another tower pushing forward as Mixu might need to abandon this base, or is he going for full surround? Now he has Sipari, he has a lot of units, but as one of those Absolvers siege up, it's really hard to go into it. Absolvers sieging up at the top of the hill. Oh, okay. good. heavy damage. Ooh. Well played there by Mixu. It does ultimately lose them thanks to the thrones, but it's still still a position, it still slowed things down. Got Santa Claus to have to think about pushing in. Like that, Santa Claus cannot push in now because they lost too many Hallowers. But he did kill the base, and that was his main objective. Heading for the for the Pyro Cat might not be worth to keep jumping on this. Oh, they're relying on the damage reduction. It's just not enough. It's like there's the force multipliers only work if you have the large enough force to multiply. And Mixu currently does not. Not in that position, anyway. Mixu coming in back in with the rest of his army, and Santa seems to have just a bigger army and a better map control. But it can still come down to the fight, right? If all oh, the Absolvers are well-sieged up already, it's going to be hard no, to there, You can't this. walk into this. Mixu cannot approach this. They have to find a point where Santa is not ready. Yep. And quite frankly, Santa's just... They are so far ahead in terms of their army value and size. Like, they just... Trying to push into this is simply a bad idea without having... Well, even army counters aren't enough. Like, the, the army composition is just solid. Yeah, Santa's just taking some really great fights throughout this. Even the fight just at, at the top of the... In the middle of the map, they're really put put it so far in uh, Santa's favor. Even though we killed a few thrones here and there, make, Santa's just been growing his army again and again and again. And at this point, Mixer's just on two bases, and here comes in Santa for a final push. It seems like he wants to get his old castigators. The big counter of those thrones, and salvation comes down for Mixu. He's keeping all his all his units alive as the fight goes on. But is it enough? It as... is enough from the looks of it. At the very least, it's giving Santa Claus pause to worry about extra damage as they come in. If they try to push forward, they just get hit again and again. But the salvation gets weighted out, despite the extra value. It's simply not enough. Santa wise enough to avoid pushing in too hard. Mixu. Mixu once again on the back foot, half the army. Yeah, the biggest and thing right now is that Santa has such a big has such a big economy behind this. Mixu really needed to be able to win a big fight, and it wasn't it. He calls in the GG, and we'll move on to game number two. Santa Claus, man, that was that was extremely solid play. Oh yeah, like, he loves his Orzu. He loves his slow pushing Orzu, putting towers on the map, just pushing for slowly but surely forward, uh, getting his defenses up to stop the harass. And Mixer just wasn't able to get a foot in right there. Yeah, they were... I can't... I'm honestly really surprised how well that worked out for... For Mixer that entire time. Because Santa Claus, again, they they rebuffed early approaches. They were doing a lot of damage. It was the mid-game where we started getting in that Castigator set up and the Thrones being torn apart that Mixu looked like they had a chance. Yeah. And they almost did. They just... It just was that one fight... On the side of the map where drop the pillar, everything falls apart. Hmm. Like drop the pillar, lose the forces. Yeah, some damage is done to Santa Claus, but they got their tower foundation, they got the center of the map, and from there they could just they could do whatever they want. Hmm. And they were expanding a bunch too. That was the other thing. Santa Claus was didn't touch on that, but they were getting their economy solid that entire time. Oh yeah. He finally got the base in the bottom right, and you know, Mixer just wasn't able to do the counter damage he was looking for. He got some wardens in. Uh, but Santa was usually in position to defend. At this point, Mixu and Santa seem ready to go back and redo the same strategy. Or no, okay, yeah, Santa, run it back. I'll run it back. Okay, Mixu might have a plan this time to deal with this, and you know, Mixu could have said, "Oh, you know, it's just this fight. If I had taken this fight just a bit differently, the game I would have won it definitely." And yeah, ready to just do the same thing. Santa, he won't. He doesn't need to change either because he won the last game as well. And as we all know, when you win a game, the exact same strategy will work every single time. Well, because yeah. people don't adapt. Exactly. Circular logic again. Yeah. 
I have the final strategy that always wins. Why would I change it up ever? Yeah. Said every said every player ever at some point. <laughs> to be fair, to, to, to that point, though, there are some strategies like, okay, this is solid. I can just win with this, and my opponent doesn't know how to counter this because I'll just play better than him. And yeah, well, that's, that's true. I mean, if you're if if what you're doing is not being dealt with, there's not a whole lot of point in changing until it is. Yeah, exactly. Which is a big thing. A lot of uh, well, I'm sure in fighting games as well, it's like, oh, he doesn't know how to counter his combo. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. Like generally, if someone's if you're doing something that your opponent doesn't know how to deal with, you just keep doing it. Yeah. Like, they will, true. but the difference there is that in a fighting game, once they learn how to deal with it, you just do something else. In a strategy game, if they learn how to deal with it, you've invested half of the game's length into setting up for that strategy, and you might have just shot yourself in the foot. Yeah, but there's other games, right? Set us up to 1 0. That's so true. Can, That's true. You can just see, can he defend this? No, <laughs> whatever. I'll go right to the finals with this and just defeat you there. Well, same setup as last time. Go for the natural expansion, go for the Legion Hall and buy the tower. Mixu definitely looking to play the late game as well. And similar approach to last time. A little bit more forward, but basically the same. So Santa absolutely is signaling that they are going for the same thing. Yeah, well, Mixu in general is someone that is known for for going for the big micro, for a lot of uh, multitasking. Mixu is probably one of the fastest players we do have in Immortal, like even considering like Hydra playing last time. Um, Mixu generally consider a bit faster than him. Of course, they're both excellent players. In their they're own right. on point. Yeah, exactly. They, they just have a that, that's really Mixu's biggest his calling card, right? It's it's his speed, how fast he can do stuff all over the place. And so late game just adjusts better for that type of playstyle. That's I'm kind of surprised given that the Mixu did not spread out to find expansions. Considering yeah. that you know they are playing a they are playing an immortal that works well with runbys, and they are they are a player that does those well. That's true. Especially if you can always recall back as well, use that power to exactly. uh, deliver from evil. And that can be a strategy, but it seems like uh, Santa was ready last game. He did have the the whole setup at his uh, natural to stop the run base from coming in, having the yeah, citadel and down side, the wall. Yeah, and was, there were citadels across, so trying to get to the side bases was challenging. Yeah, like, I been... could see that that Santa did prepare for that. They set up, yeah, they set up everywhere. Honestly, it's I can kind of see where Mixu was going with not trying to go for that, simply because. Doing that was going to be a problem. Like, it, you're going to lose units in any run by you try to go for. Yep. Santa heading back for the same strategy. Really wants control of the right side. And of course, getting a free pirate camp every single time is pretty powerful. With that Citadel place right at the forefront. Oh, yeah, that's true. It would, wouldn't it? I mean, if you mm -hmm. if you actually hit them. Yep. You can just bring a teapot to pick it up afterwards. And voila, you have a, a free pirate camp. Not for this one. This one just happens. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, that one's Pyre Minus. Yeah. It's even easier. Oh, wow. I get not putting it on the left side. This Mixu has uh, easier control to that side. You don't want to uh, give him free control of that power. He kills the tower, takes it for himself, and like, oh, I can't attack there anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. It was Santa Claus has much... Uh, this is... this Everything Santa is doing makes perfect sense. In actual sound yeah. logic terms, not their circular logic. Ah, boring. Such a boring well, player. Just like a cheesy uranium player. <laughs> It's like, uranium giver. Where's yeah? Where's the cheesy uranium giver, Santa? Yeah, he's not here today. He's just playing super solid. Ugh, un unbelievable. Showing that he has more than one tool set, and one of his toolkit is just playing normal. Oh my god. Well, they're playing Orzum. Orzum is very much a play. I, I should say, okay, Orzum is now very much play normal. If Orzum used to be very much cheese because you could build stuff faster, and you know Santa would go for that. But now there's some tricks, but not as much. Okay, Mixu being much more aggressive this time around. Going in immediately for a push, not going for for minor harassment, going to try to take out the army directly, dealing some damage, bit of a potentially period victory. If this Absolver stays alive, it's going to be far more effective. One more hit, the Absolver stays in. This is huge. Mixu has this Legion all dead to rights. Oh, man. Or that's, had, that's a really had it dead oh. to rights. Still could go down, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty tough blow for uh, Santa in the early game, but he might just have enough coming back in to help defend. Uh, yeah, well, it was still a good fight for uh, for Mixu either way. I don't think he... Yeah, they're yeah they're playing it safe, not not trying to hold the line there. They lost the Absolvers. They could only hold for as long as they were not going to get attacked. Yeah, Elbow behind us, he's rebuilding his stuff. He did some damage. He forced some units out from Santa. Uh, behind us, taking his third base as he usually does, but Santa sees it right away. He counterattack. He's coming in. Does he kill it like last game? 
Well, Mixu's out of point. position. Mixu is out of position. Yeah, that is another big thing that brought uh, Santa to victory last time, getting that base super fast. And yeah, Mixu going for the pirate camp as the attack is coming out on his base. He's still early enough to they cancel have to go up the high wants. ground. They have to go up the high ground to take this. Oof. This is, this, no, this expansion's... The, Mixu's got to cancel it. No, this is uh, a complete suicide to Mixu's army. Scepters might be able to go, be taken out, but this base... Mixu, please cancel this base! Cancel this base! No! They didn't cancel the base! Oh, that, is, that is a death blow! Like, Mixu's lost everything. They just lost... Like, half of their army's worth of... Alloy losing that base. And now they're trying to fight off this like this force that basically they don't have the actual resources to deal with on their own turf. Yeah, Santa coming in. He can just siege up his absolvers and as more absolvers come in. As as Santa's first absolver already goes down to the Zentari, he's doing his best, even pulls the workers, but the workers might not be enough as absolvers keep doing more damage. Uh, getting for the base is not the optimal choice yeah. at this point. Mixu's no, reinforcements just, are enough. This is to save Mixu. Like, going for the yeah. base, the base, like, Acropolis tanking everything, gave Mixu a fighting chance in that. Yeah, and the Absolver's coming out just at the right time as Mixu making more and more workers. At this point, Santa has his free bases. He's just sending in more units to force, more, force Mixu to just stay back as he needs to micro these units. Mixu... Heading for the counterattack at this point, he thinks this might be the way to uh, get back into this. That's going to be a hard point. battle to fight. It is going to be a hard battle to fight. So the Absolver just got out of position. Mixu knows exactly where Santa Claus is. An advantage that Santa Claus did not have themselves. Now Santa's well, just... No, going for those little scouting run buys, so they know what's up. Oh, Mixu contesting oh, map no. control on the eastern side of the map. Santa Claus doesn't really have the army to safely take this. Does have Empire Broken, however. Does have the power to save it, so it's... It's gonna force out Santa. Mixu... Thinks they can take it! They get it! Even just taking a couple of Zentari? Okay, not, not a whole lot of win from them, but... Bought some time, bought some space. Any damage he can get right now is what he needs to get back in the game, slowly but surely. Army value is still pretty close. But the, the big expansions? difference is Santa has a third base. Yeah, Santa has yeah. a third base while Mixu does not. And that's a big difference. As the game goes on, the longer it goes, the longer that Santa has this economical advantage, the the faster and faster his his uh, army can grow. Oh, and getting another base. So even as Mixu even as Mixu gets their third alloy only, Santa's getting a third. And with Ether, like Santa's Santa is getting or should I say getting a fourth with Ether. Santa is again staying very much ahead. Mixu Clearly thinking, okay, Santa got oh, no. they got to be out of power or on cooldown. This is the time to go for it, and Santa has locked them in. Mixu and is Mixu trapped in the corner with here. Santa and does not have a way out. Well, Santa seems to be going around, and Mixu behind all this still has enough for a deliver from evil if he still desires. He can still go for the fire camp as well, as Santa really looking for the full surround here. As he doesn't really know how to surround his enemy. Well, at the very Santa least, they can take out the tower. Broken here. Yeah. They do not. And there's the there's the setup. Mixu, with enough absolvers to stop this entire from doing anything, it's the absolvers in the back that are going to be a problem. Mixu setting up their own, but a little bit of position. Deliver from evil is called. The pyre camp is no longer fully secured by Santa. And now Mixu, ha mo most importantly, has a way around the map for a little while. Like, remember last game? This was a problem. They couldn't get into there. Mixu realized that mistake. But at some point, Santa can take it back to us. The they can. Is not dead, they can, but it'll take, a couple, it'll take a couple minutes because they have to get the pyre and yeah, then they have to wait for the tower to build. So Mixu still yeah. has a timing window that they can do harassment from the eastern side of the map where Santa is otherwise undefended. Yeah, especially with those dervish. Finally has this dervish ready to jump in if he so needs so. He has been making a few more dervish this game compared to his usual Sipari composition, and Pyra has not been taking in the middle, no. Well, it's just now coming up. Like Oh, I meant the Pyra on the left side left camp is still Oh, a, is yeah, still yeah, a, yeah. A, yes. Not taken. Oh, that that Pyra shard, yeah, that one's just That's free. Didn't there, didn't have want. Okay, are you willing to attack it's, the the elder right I now? I don't think so. Yeah, it's a big Mixu, fighter side. Mixu is seeding it. 
and Santa sees that he might decide to go in, but if he does, it's gonna be a fight as Mixu can jump on top of him. Oh, Santa does not care. No, they do not. Oh, they realize this is they, okay. There, they see it. That counterattack is not gonna go well for Mixu if they keep going for that tower. Nice push forward, continues in, finds finds some weak points here. Yeah, Tech structures this, are an option. It makes you still have to deliver from evil behind all this. So he's forcing Santa to come in and deliver, we'll say, three of those absorbers as some of them go down. Separate are still here, though, so that's another heavy, expensive loss for him. As we look at the army value at this point, it's 1,600 to 4,600. Ooh, Santa, so far ahead. And able to yeah. stop the economic harassment as well. Losing a few moats, but for the price they paid, Mixu did not get a good deal. Yeah, it makes you looking for the best he can, looking for counterattack anywhere he can to try and get back into this. He's going for he has his fourth base up now, as both of them are on four base. There's that at least. But the army value, the army value for Santa the is just so high. Army value is a huge difference, and that army value is supplemented by the fact that Santa Claus, while they do have four bases, they have them spread out in a way that with a larger army they can defend, but it means they have full control over the map. Mixu has a tiny corner of the map. That's all they have. Santa, on the other hand, pretty much has the entire southeast side under their control whenever they want to take it. Santa heading up into Haldor's to help with the next pushes as he goes up into, into his army count. And yeah, the Haldor might just be the killing blow for his opponent. He's able to dislodge the Absolvers from afar, shoot them, and forcing Mixu to run back if he doesn't want to keep getting shot at. Cascader can take care of that Scepter, but Santa is slow pushing to victory now at this point. Mixu needs to find a way to stop this. Luckily for them, the Ancient is actually untaken. The Pyre, like Pyre is on the table for sure, and that gives Mixu options for further runbacks, like, or for the runbys, rather. Oh, I, I do love the Cascaders. He, he doesn't have to worry about Frelms this time, but still, the Scepters are powerful, and, and the, they're known as Frontlanders, so you need to keep them, uh, they have a lot of health, so Cascaders are great to dealing with them. And... Yeah, it is. Okay, Mixu held his position. Santa okay. does not want to push too far forward. They don't. Mixu going for a reliquary. Are they going to go for Saushin? They have plenty of anti-air out of this cast here, so I don't think they're going to go for Zephyrs, but Saushin would be amazing just to keep their units alive. Ooh, Santa going for the Ancient. Mixu a bit slow to react, and the Absolver's already sieged up, so uh, Santa doesn't even have to attack Mixu's army. Yeah, he gets for the oh, ancient. Oh no, no, not that choke point. Oh no, Mixu. You can't afford to lose your units like that. Yeah, Mixu's still finding a losing battle, but he's he's gonna find a way, right? He needs to. This fight is the fight that Santa chose to go for. The pillar comes down, the ultimate going through. Mixu going for the Heaven's Aegis, which will help us fight a lot, but is it enough as Santa's not done pushing forward? Orzu. Oh, it's it's a lot. S Mixu actually despite Santa taking this, Mixu was able to hold the line reasonably well. If Santa wins this, they have lost so much that, again, pushing forward, it's going to be a major problem. They lost all their anti-air as well. This is a major blow for Santa Claus' ability to hold the line going forward. Yeah, still a bit ahead on the army value, but the Howlers are still at the back here. And Nowhere near as ahead, though. I mean, they went from being 3,000 alloy ahead to being, like, maybe 1,000. 2,000 now with the units being constructed, but it's... It's far more even. This worked. This gave Mixu the opening they needed. On top of that, the expansion, which granted is getting attacked, but still. Oh yeah, but that's Mixu, not a big army, right? That's not. It is a big not army. gonna defend this at all. Mixu pushing in here, got the shields, gets rid. Of, could get rid of the shards. Certainly getting rid of the howlers. That's the main target here. Yeah, Taking the howlers don't worry about anything. Yeah, the, the howlers are still on the back though, and Mixu heads back a bit. A bit before pushing back in for the next push. Does he want to go now? Or is he waiting for a bit more reinforcements? Uh, Santa needs to reposition it. His, his reinforcements have come back. The Ancient is back in 30 seconds. And that's going to be a big pirate advantage. Santa can okay, but take, look, at, look at the reinforcements, though. Nothing shoots up. Well, magic mm. shoot up, but they don't deal enough damage for the matter. Nothing else shoots up. It doesn't look yep. like... Oh, no, but Mixu not cluing in. They've taken the anti or They just haven't built their own air force in response. They have over expanded quite a bit in response, so they're not going to be falling behind too far. That pyre is... Okay, so Santa's got... They got to make this part to make up for the lack that pillar not working out. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's that the big thing here. Yeah, but look it, at that power amount go up after this fight. Look at oh, that. Oh yeah, 150. 150. Extra 150 there, an extra. That is a free pillar. Yeah, just like that. Just like that, he can throw down the pillar. And makes it behind us. Still has to play defensive. Can't really counterattack as he needs all of his force to defend us. But as I say, that's probably going for. Nah, it. Come on, come on. It's Mixu. They're playing a Jari. They're going to go for a run by us. They have to. Yeah, he tried to go through the natural, but there's a full wall there. Uh, no, Santa knows there, what's yeah, Santa's. Go there, is, there is no way in here. Nope. He has to go through the main path <laughs> of all the Citadel, so. Uh, Mixu tried it. But of course, there's another counterattack. It was just. That was just a diversion as he goes in for there. <laughs> but. Empire and Broken comes down, and Santa is safe. But that does mean Empire and Broken's on cooldown. So yep. Santa, so Mixu, they have some time to like take out a tower or some other soft nearby target. Whatever he decides on, and oh, there's a Dervish mine. I haven't seen that that many of those. Oh, oh yeah. How about that? Yep. How Hooray! About I don't see enough of those. Especially for right now, Mixu needs every force multiplier they can get. And that bonus damage from the Dervish Mine is... If they had more Dervish, it'd be useful. Unfortunately, they don't have a lot of them. Yeah, Speaking ooh. of force multipliers, though, the pillar drops for Santa Claus right in Mixu's third. Quickly escaping from that, dropping the shields as well. Mixu looking to push back here. Getting rid of the Absolvers rapidly. Completely wiping out most of the, most of the resistance from Santa Claus. The rest of them going for that Necropolis, not... Going for the main four, so losing their support. In the meantime, the Shara is taken out. Co collapsing the entire army. Once again, Santa Claus losing everything in an attempt on a pillar. Though this time, Mixu is forced to retreat. His reinforcements from Santa are able to hold the line. And the Acropolis will go down. The reinforcements from Santa coming in clutch at the right la last moment there. Those Antari coming in. And keeping the Hallowers around this whole time just meant that Santa just had a bigger army here and Mixu has to tap out. And the 2 goes to Santa on this uh, winner's bracket finals. And yeah, Mixu will go down to the lower bracket finals to head off against Scruffy. Man, that was, that was a hell of a game. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Santa building up slowly but surely. Scruffy, Mixu trying to go for an early attack but wasn't able to do quite enough damage. Uh, to make it worth it, and Santa slowly but surely getting his way to victory. Scruffy against Mixu coming up next. That will be an exciting match. And above all this, I'm quite happy to just see Loss, uh, to, to see uh, Fool's Bay again. Me too. I gotta say, you though, also, I'm pretty happy for Santa right now. Like, okay, so here's the thing. Little little bit of trivia about the community right now. Santa Claus has the most second place finishes Ooh. and has never won a tournament. Wait, he's. In, I'm pretty sure he's won a two v two. They have not won a tournament in the last three months. Okay, in the alpha, because I'm yeah. pretty sure he's won some in the in the pre alpha. They they might have, but I've only been tracking the last few, last few months since the alpha ah. like gone to the really solid state that it's yeah. been in, and yeah, could... it's been like three seconds, three thirds, no first place finish. Mm. Well, so for the alpha, if Santa takes this, yeah, but if Santa takes this, then they'll have won an alpha tournament. At least in the last three months. Yeah, at the end of his Kong line. Because I remember, like, yeah. before this, like, remember how Magical used to always get second place? No one will remember that? Yep. It was like six tournaments in a row where Magical got second place. Like, oh my god, poor Magical. Then that's when his dominance started, right? He just got second place after second place. And then after that, he just started winning them all, except when Hydra decided to come back from time to time and was able to, to like, fight off Magical sometimes. But Magical still won some against him as well. Maybe this is the, the moment for Santa. Santa's been practicing a lot, and he's ready to uh, take his throne that, uh, on the first I mean, place after all the seconds. Santa is going normal, which I did not expect to be as scary as it is. <laughs> like, for, for the cheese player, we'll see. who, let's be honest, is still playing some tricky games. They still, they still have those instincts that they developed with more cheese-focused play. Going for a standard macro game, having those instincts, having those skills, kind of knowing where they can, where they, what they can take and what they can't. That is a scary combination, and Mixu is making it pay dividends. Well, it's all about finding the right to, like, like you said, Santa being able to play all the play styles doesn't have to go uh, to go that way. He can play every single style. Yeah, Just they, can a play, good advantage. they can play. They can play cheese. They can play hyper aggressive. They can not play at all for five minutes and then beat you anyway. <laughs> like they can do all sorts of things every yeah. play style 
Yep. Sorry, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna get over the fact that they managed to win a game by not playing for like three minutes. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well. Santa does the Santa things and uh, wins with it. Oh. The gift that keeps on giving and uh We'll see. Yep, the uranium we'll helicopter carrying napalm. It's a gift that keeps exactly. on giving. Oh yeah, a lot of napalm going on in your opponents. It's uh, the form of a scepter sometimes, but it's a form of a warden. Always a powerful blast of angel fire. Because normal fire is too boring. You can nah, heal no, it's got really to it's it's burn your soul. Mm. I think that's how it works. I don't know. Another question for Def Q&A. Does angel fire burn your soul? Probably. Like... Probably, it seems like a thing, like, I know that there's some stuff with angels that are, like, hey, we will completely, well, I mean, Resh will blow your soul into tiny pieces and destroy you completely, so, yeah. yeah. It's the way to have fun. <laughs> that, oh, that's a mm -hmm. weird definition of fun. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> You know, angels have a different way of seeing life than we do. It's a, this is how it is sometimes. We we do not have the comprehension to look into them. Like, you know, that's the whole definition of an angel. You just look into them, you lose your soul, kind of, or at least the sharu. What? Isn't that, isn't that it? Like, you can't look into it because it's too intense for you, or the biblical sense, at least? No. Well, it won't. It depends. Well, the, the sharu, I'm pretty because... sure you can't look into it. I'm pretty sure the sharu is too intense for you. For a normal well, mortal mind. I mean, I doubt it's up to Dylan because it's not a biblical angel. It's like if you're talking about the biblical stuff, yeah, typically with like oh, okay. seraphim and such, it's if you look into them when their wings are open, you'll get incinerated. Oh, there you go. But that's that's basically thrones. Actually, thrones yeah. more cherubim. I mean, they'll burn you with a sword as well if they want to. They decide how they how you burn. Right. Yeah. But you know that I meant more of the the that's the design. Yeah. Basis. Because I thought Char was just an amalgamation of souls coming into one and... Uh... It is, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's basically the afterlife for them. Mm. Which means that, that... I asked about that and the answer was... Well, if Karath is so desperate in this war that they're sending their afterlife... And potentially sacrificing it in order to win, you know it's serious. Mm. A lot of things are serious in the in this world. That uh, the angels are not kind sometimes. It's easy. Nope. Not the kindest, but uh, they could be worse. They could be Talmetra. Well, unless Talmetra, they're fine if you if you're a good person or if you were no, born if you're an right ambitious place. person, right? If you were born in the right place, the right time. Yeah, if that's... Or you are ambitious enough and willing to hurt other people in order to get to the top. Oh, you mean some people don't do that? I thought that was the whole purpose of this world. Uh, it's a... No? Well, if you're I'm in Talmetra, well. it is. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's how you move forward. Uh, are we heading back to Fool's Bay this time again as well? I don't know, actually. Oh, that's no. up to... Oh, yeah, we are. Yep, yep. Oh, nice. Looking forward to more Fool's Bay. So this is again a best of one. So whoever wins this will go up against Santa in the finals, I believe. That's right. Yeah, no best and of one for the final one. No, the finals are best of five with Santa getting a game advantage. Oh, there we go. Santa wins. So if Santa wins two, the opponent can win three. It's going to be max that of four correct. matches for the finals. Yeah, it's all order for either player. Seems like Santa is has been willing to play on the Fool's Bay with just a more a defensive style. I'm curious if someone else is going to go for that defensive style. So it makes you try to go for a few timing attacks to kind of put him a bit behind as they didn't work out. They almost worked out, though. It they was it did. was close. Yeah. Like, that tower push on the right side, if they had gotten rid of the foundation as well, that would have made a huge difference. Well, this time he's fighting against Scruffy and the different players, different strategies, different ways to play. Different Immortals, too. Scruffy's gone for Zul. Ooh, the Charm versus Zul. I'm certainly glad we're seeing more Ajari. We haven't gotten a chance to see that much Ajari since the recent patches. I feel like it's Mala we've seen the le le least of. Or at least You're right. Screen. We have seen the least of, Which is weird, too, because when we first got the patch updates, everyone was playing Mala. Oh, yeah. Mala was one of the first ones to get well, to get into the game, right? To to be able to, to challenge her. And then we got the next patch of all the Immortals getting the new toolkits. Like, ooh, interesting. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. And then everyone started playing Orzum because... 
to, much to Santa in particular's chagrin, because the towers were just getting bust, like tower foundation stuff was getting busted. Oh yeah, well, getting then, free pyre out of it as well. Like yes, because yeah, because because you get free pyre of it, but it was when it was under construction you got free pyre, which oh, was not well. intended, and that got fixed. So then now we've seen we have seen Santa play a bunch of Orzum. And we've seen Mixu mm. play some. We've, I think besides Scrocky plays them as well. So we have seen our players play them. Just, it's less busted. Yeah. Well, it depends how you want to play it, right? If you really want to play super defensive, it'll be really hard to break if you can place multiple towers one next to the other. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't, that, you we, can... Uh, yeah, we've seen that. We saw that last week. But this week, no. Oh. But this week, we're getting a lot more variety, which is something I'm glad to see. So for now, Scruffy is wanting a little bit more of an economy and Mixu agrees. I think economy with some tech, both players want to, play, want to go mid to late game. Well, this is probably the longest, the longest map in the main to main attack path. So that makes a big difference in wanting to attack your opponent early. It's like, oh, you, mm -hmm. it's kind of long to attack as well. The middle is not well divided. So putting your stuff there yeah. is kind of scary. You, you're kind of scared of putting a proxy here. It's a... Uh, you know, Deciding to attack somewhere. The the two attack paths as well. Uh, having really two defined attack paths compared to other maps where you have kind of the main middle and then you have attack paths really to the side. But here it's really the two side paths that you want to attack through. So it's a map design that really lends itself to multi prong. Which I don't know who's going to favor. I mean, we said Mixu is the fastest player we have, but Scruffy is not too far behind. Oh, yeah. Scruffy knows his stuff. And if he can get his invisible guys a bit everywhere, hide them, hide them where his opponents doesn't look, he can get some uh, cheeky stuff in. Well, they starting that setup immediately, but that's it takes a little while to get there. I mean, you have to get the upgrades, you have to get the neuroside. They're not immediately going for that either. It's pretty clear they're doing what is kind of the meta, which is get fast tech and then get either thrums or resonance and as quickly as possible. Because against Karath, you kind of have to. And we've seen yeah. resolvers all day today, and they do not... You do not fare well fighting into them with Aru infantry. Yep, this has been a bit of the Absolver meta. Uh, that we've seen Absolvers kind of come in and out of favor with their breakpoints, getting really powerful or a bit too weak sometimes. Uh, yeah, they seem very powerful right now. They can get countered by Resonance or other units as well, so... Yeah, so we have seen... could... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking Scruffy might go for that. Scruffy is yeah. going to go for Thrums this time, however, which also counter potentially would counter Mixu's Absolvers because they don't shoot up. Mm. It is, that is an issue. Not shooting yep. up against stuff that's in the air. Oof. And Mixu is not prepared for stuff that needs to, people to shoot up. Yeah, Scruffy going for the weird counterattack, and Mixu is already kind of in position, so this will do absolutely nothing, as Mixu is perfectly prepared for this. Well, that defense... I mean, Scruffy doesn't have any way of slowing down Mixu's tech path or anything, really. But tech path in particular, as they are going for quick Angelarium. Yeah, Scruffy doesn't really need to def didn't really need to uh, do any damage because he's going for he's going for his own tech really quickly. Uh, only three forums coming out, and as the Angelarium finishes up, he might have his Sentinels just in time to defend this. So that's what uh, I'm thinking Scruffy too. Yeah. Yeah, even though, even though Mixu did not scout this, he has played against Aru enough to know that the Frums are always an issue. You need to get your tech up very quickly if you want to defend anything. Yep. Uh, well, we got one Sentinel, you're fine. Yeah. The one Sentinel's coming out. Against the Bones? Okay. Okay, Mixu does have to deal with this. Spots it in time, gets the Dervish coming around back. Bone Stalkers getting spread out well. Nice micro by Scruffy there to avoid the splash damage. But it's not enough. Just the numbers simply do not work in their favor. Even with Zol being popped in here, does actually no, that does force Mixu to retreat. So yeah, economic damage coming covered. through as well. So Scruffy, not not a loss, not entirely at least. Yeah, it was a bit of an expensive pyre uh, a pyre cost, but at the same time, there's not that many units, and Scruffy, you know, he can use his pyre to, to do this type of damage and get the indirect win, as the Frums will be coming in soon to do even more damage to these units. Oh, more importantly, awarded. covering an expansion that Scruffy was going for early third. Oh, exactly. G getting the map control. And one of the covering, best things can do. covering nine thrums being set up on top of this, which again, nothing shoots up. Even with the <laughs> use of the Angelarium, Mixu did not go for a Sentinel. They clearly were thinking, oh, well, just to worry about the, the Wardens. Just go for anti ground. Nope! Not I mean, an option. This is the best one. This is the best, this of is one, the best as well. of one. 
So Scruffy, if they take this off, like, off these thrums, they are getting a lot. Tower is at least something. It's just not going to matter. The thrums just say, okay, cool, I'm not going to fight. Why would I fight the tower? What, what is wrong with you? Yeah, heading Sentinels for are on the way, though. Yeah, they have to be at this point, but he's going for the Allo line. And the Sentinels, while they are great, you do need to micro them really well. They outrange, they outrange the thrums a little bit, but with the towers, you're generally able to do well. Uh, but at the same time, Scruffy just denying his opponent Does not of care. all mining. Yeah, he's he's denying all the mining. And denying the Sentinels, too, soon enough. The second one will get out beforehand. Scruffy has to worry about a counterattack at the same time. Their, their third has been set up. I don't know if it's been scouted. Their defenses are not yet in position. They did get rid of the Angelarium, though. Slowing down Scruffy's ability, or Mix's ability to defend the air. While at the same time, losing pretty much all map control on the eastern side of the map. The, it seems like he's, he's going to be forcing the units back home as Scruffy will need to use the front to defend. Uh, Throne defense, able to force it, or able to force a recall, and that's that's still a win. That still gives Scruffy time to rebuild on their side. Yeah, and behind all this, is Scruffy still going for more fronts, or will be he, he heading to other tech choices as he forces opponents to go for that? No, it's more fronts. The fronts never stop coming. <laughs> more thrums, Thrum, more bone stalkers, no upgrades. Interestingly enough, all everything here is not upgraded. Scruffy yeah, is entirely dependent on numbers. Yeah, he's going for the next push right now. He really wants to kill his opponent with this. As the Sentinels come out, but he killed the Engineer, as you said, and killing any Sentinel here makes such a big difference. Yeah, it's going to be another, what, 30, 40 seconds before the next set of Sentinels comes in. These thrums will not be stopped for any time soon. As Sentinels and trying to buy time to keep the Acropolis alive is the only thing you can really do. As the Bone Stalkers come in, they don't care. Sentinels can't hit them. Mm. Nerdy just coming in, and at that point, he's going to send his his from somewhere else. Mix it behind all this counterattack instead. He wants to force his opponent to bring his from home, and really, that's a smart choice. But is oh, it enough what? damage? Okay, oh, no. well played there. I mean, a little late, but hey, it's interesting use of the of the recall from Mixu there. Hey, it worked out. It was the closest base. He had his units in, and they helped defend it, but not quite fast well, enough. Well, they, the they helped help stop. Attack. They helped stop the Bone Stalkers from just wa waltzing straight into the natural. Yeah. Which, I mean, granted, they still walk into, but they take a bit of damage along the way. Yeah, behind and this, now, Scruffy. Yeah, in position. The question is, is Scruffy, what is Scruffy building behind this? Is he going for another tech choice, or is he still building more from? They have a nurse? Oh, this? okay, they're upgrading. They're going for fully upgraded yep, Bone Stalkers. Yep, I'm brewing time as well. And the base will not go down, and at least he gets to save the base here. Oh no, the thrums come oh, in! Oh no, the wanted. thrums! The thrums to spoil it! Mixu on one base against Scruffy. Haven't been able to hold this third, no problem, this entire time. Setting up reinforcements. Continuing to build up tech. Like, Scruffy is well positioned for the mid to late game. And Mixu has this counterattack. This counterattack is Mixu's only hope of finding any way back into this match. It could be enough, though. This is a very powerful and strong army. The Frums are and great counter. harassing, but they're not the best in the straight-up fight. Of course, the Resonance coming out. Resonance are the best at holding ground. It all comes down to where is Mixu attacking? Scruffy, he can afford to, he can afford to sack his They can third. afford, yeah, yeah they, they can't afford to lose that. Yeah, his opponent's on two bases. It all comes down to he needs to keep him at bay until his Resonance come out. Hopefully he has Deploy set up as Aerox are coming in to deal with those Sentinels as well. Okay. He has the army now. This is going to be really hard to break as those resonants are set up. Let's see how Mixu tries to deal with this. Oh, well, Aerox, Aerox being the main force here, getting to get rid of or at least distract the Sentinels. Doesn't get rid of them, but does give the Thrums all the room in the world to take out these Absolvers. A win is a win. Scruffy, well, they don't save the third base. They do get a bit of damage on. End up with a significant army lead over Mixu. And, like, Mixer did not really get a whole lot after that attack. And this push here, this is Scruffy going for the kill. They have nothing yes, on the ground Scruffy. to stop them. The Sentinels can't stop them. Scruffy can move straight into Mixu's base. Mixu, what reinforcements do you have? Nothing! Scruffy takes it! Oof! What a game plan from Scruffy here. He had a plan and he set it up to execution perfectly, getting those early frums as fast as possible, waiting to get nine before he jumps on his opponent. And once he did, Mixu had to figure out how to defend it. Sentinels coming in slowly but surely, but just a bit too slow. And yeah, and after that, it was just about getting that third base and establishing his big lead with the Resonance as a follow-up.
what a great game plan for Scruffy as he heads to the finals to face off against Santa.